Hey guys, uh, I'm in love with you. I've got a couple magic videos that I want to come out, but I realize that people might not be into magic, or they might be like, what is that? This is not Yu-Gi-Oh! This is not the card game I know and love, Nick. How can you expect me to learn an entire card game just by watching you? Good point. Fair. I, I can't really refute it. So, um, this is going to be an intro to magic video. If you've never played magic, if you've never seen magic, I'm going to try and make it as like easy to grasp as possible. Because honestly, it's not that complicated. Um, unlike Yu-Gi-Oh, well, Yu-Gi-Oh has their archetypes, so it's like, okay, there's blue eyes monsters, dark magician monsters, okay, and, you know, they'll have, like, different, um, like, abilities based on those, and then there's, like, bigger ones where it's like, okay, this is a pendulum monster, ritual monster, ro ritual monster, normal monster, synchro, etc. Magic is similar, but not, so I'm gonna do my best to explain it, but first, if you're, if you're interested at all at the end of this video uh, I'm gonna be going through two games there's magic duels which will is the greatest way you can teach yourself magic um, and it's free on Steam highly 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 recommend you pick this up it's a couple years old now so like it's not a game you're gonna be sticking with and definitely don't invest any money into it because uh, there's no support for it like they're, they're they run the servers and that's about it uh, and then there's magic arena uh, which is the newest magic game and uh, I'm having a fuck ton of fun with it, so uh, this is more of like the one you eventually want to get yourself into. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's start things off. So Magic Duels um, is a pretty damn cool game. So honestly, you don't need to worry about battle mode. You don't need to. You can worry a little bit about, about card collection and quests, I guess. Um, so these are just the different things that you need for um, to get coins. Coins. You go to the store and you can get booster packs. Etc. Honestly, you're not going to need to worry about any of that, and I'll tell you why. All you really need to focus on is the story mode, and the story mode, um, you play... <laughs> in the story mode, you play uh, different characters and stuff like that, but beyond that, you also play with pre-made decks based on the um, cards that the character would have, so you can play through all of story mode and not have to buy a single pack, which is honestly pretty cool. So, um... Yeah, it starts off with the fa the or Magic Origins, which is, uh, I think, see, the 2018 version of this. So you've got Gideon, Jace, Liliana, Chandra, and Nyssa. These are, like, the five biggest, like, kind of uh, magic state plan They're called Planeswalkers, but I guess they're, like, the most noticeable ones. Chandra is the one Magic likes to throw over everything. Um, and Jace is, like, a close second. They like to attach those two to, like, every promotional material. Um, think of them as like the Dark Magician, the the uh, Blue Eyes, the Red Eyes, the... Basically, they're like the face of magic. And this one, it's a cool... They're like cool little uh, see, like setups. They'll take you through each character. Each character uses a different mana color. Uh, so there are five mana colors. White, blue, black, uh, red, and then green. And this will teach you how to use each one and what their like benefits are. And they all... So those are like the basics. Um, let me try and run a random one here. So let me just, I'll just jump into the end of, uh, you know, sorry, don't read this if you want to know. Uh, actually, I don't think it really matters too much. His is kind of all over the place. Um, but basically this shows you how they became, like, planeswalkers and stuff like that. And, um, I'm waiting for it, here we go. So you start off with a card, or with a deck of 60, and then you draw 7 cards. You can choose to keep it. Or you can, I think they force you to keep it in this one, because it might be done. So, these are mana cards, uh, and this is how you play your card, your spells. So, one mana, and then you have Elite Vanguard, which, if you look in the, I think it's the scroll wheel for this, one mana, there you go. So you can play that for your first turn. Uh, the big thing about magic that differs from Yu-Gi-Oh! is that every character, or most cards that you play, uh, or especially monsters can't do anything their first turn. They can't block or attack. Um, so it's called summoning sickness. All right. So next turn, I play that too. Now I have two mana. So now I have a couple options. And what's really great about Magic Duels, it'll give you like a recommended card that you should play it, um, which is really, really goddamn helpful. So yeah, up here we'll see a one and then a planes card. Now, a very, very common mistake people make when they first get into magic, it's like, oh, so that means I need one planes. No. So the planes by itself 
is one mana, and then there's a one. So for instance, this, that's just one planes, because you just have the symbol. This is actually two, because it's one plus one equals two. And then you'll see over here, two. So two plus one equals three. And so on. Uh, I'll play this, just to get that off the bat. So then it comes, that's your main phase. This is pretty similar to Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm assuming most people who are watching this are coming from like at least a little bit of knowledge of Yu-Gi-Oh. If not, that's fine. You'll still get it. You'll still pick up the basics. And again, I'm just trying to give you like a very quick walkthrough. If you're interested, just play Magic Duels. It's free. They'll give you like a lot of fun cards to play around with, a lot of like set decks and stuff like that, that are honestly a lot of, a lot of fun and very enjoyable to use. So okay, so now I have three attack and two defense. So he has currently has no defense, so I'm just gonna attack. Confirm attack. The timer will give him a chance to react. This is their block phase, they have no monsters, so they can't block. And then you do three damage to them. So each player starts with 20 life. Life works the same way it does in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh, you start with 8,000 life points. Magic, it, it makes it a little bit more basic. It keeps it at lower numbers. So 20, and then, you know. Uh, what are we okay. So this is like their crazy card. Honestly, there's enough time. And oh, that's the other cool thing about this is when you're placing, when you're playing an NPC, you're allowed to read every um, uh, card like as long as you want. There's no timer. There's no rush. You can play. There's no like timer on your turn either, which makes this very, very um, accessible. I think. Okay, so whenever it attacks, it gets plus one, plus one. So that means every time it attacks, its its attack goes up to four, and its defense goes up to uh, four as well. So now we're going to see, I think, probably the first time they're going to defend. Or they might just let me go right over. So that's the other interesting thing about magic, is that Yu-Gi-Oh! I think you're... you choose... I already, I already forgot how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! That's how much I've been playing magic. Yu-Gi-Oh! You... How the fuck do you attack in Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh my god, did I forget? Oh yeah, you... so... Oh my god, this is how much magic I've been playing. Um, so in Yu-Gi-Oh, you choose which monster you want to attack. Not quite. It's very much, uh, the game is very much in the hands of the defender in this game. So, you choose when, or you basically just, like, say, okay, I want to attack. And then you'll, you'll tap whatever monsters you want to attack, and they'll just, like, automatically go from them. Your opponent can then choose to either guard with them, or they'll just let it sail, sail over, and then, you know, do their turn based on that. Now, the reason why the, that's so much better for the defense is, like, say this is 1-1. One, one. That means it has one attack and one defense. Because this monster had three attack and two defense, it wouldn't have matched up. If it had blocked, then I wouldn't have gotten through. I, it would have blocked the attack from going to the player, but it would have left me with, I think it's, it, so it only def takes away from your health. So it left me with one remaining health, and then all that health comes back at the end of your uh, turn. So... Their, their monster would be overwhelmed and would be destroyed. Mine would still stay standing and then it would go. You can technically block with more than one creature, which I think we'll see this turn. My guess is they'll use this card um, to block one of my monsters, and it'll give a better example of what I'm talking about. Okay, well actually, this one gained attack, so my guess is it'll block this. Oh, they're both blocking it. So this is a perfect example. Because... So because, um, actually that's, you're usually you're supposed to be able to choose, oh no, they choose which order, okay. I, actually, no, I think when I attack, I'm supposed to be able to choose which one I do damage to first, but it doesn't matter. So, basically, together their attack power was two, and I only had two defense, so they managed to kill that. But before they did, my guy also took out this one, and then it did two leftover damage to this one. Um, the only downside is that... Uh, it's after the end of this turn is gonna be left alive um, so we'll play that too so this is a very this is like one of the first like couple matches you can do it's very very simple and pretty easy to grasp as you can see they're playing a black deck so they've got uh, swamps and I've got planes Whenever an opponent draws a card deals one damage to that player okay yeah, so monsters, a lot of monsters will have like effects like that and stuff like that. So their whole goal is to make me lose life every time I do like basic actions. That's slowly trickling away. 
So this is an enchantment. Think like an equip card. Um, when you equip it you, to a monster, it gives a special bonus. So this one gives you plus one, plus one for every planes, which I have four of. And it gives the creature flying, which is great, because I was just going to explain flying. Um, so I'll attach that right to this dude. The other thing is there are very, very, very few cards that get rid of your uh, mana. So once you start playing that and start getting things rolling, uh, it pretty much becomes about what you draw and like how you handle the cards you have. So these two are flying, which means they cannot be blocked by creatures unless they have flying or reach. Reach is uh, typically given to like spiders and like other like kind of tall monsters, if that makes sense, where they um they're able to like block flying attacks, but they themselves can't fly. So it's basically a defense only skill. Um, but it's still very helpful, and I won. So because I sailed right over it, it's, it's that easy. Tactician, just give me an achievement because I've definitely beaten this before. So, uh, yeah, that's the very, very basics of magic. That's that's planes uh, with a custom deck. I did. This is not a custom deck, like at all. But I'm playing. This game's bugging out, and that gives like the end of that his story. So yeah, I highly recommend playing this. It's really, honestly, it's cool playing with these. So like, there's five chapters per like set. The first one has five. So normally. Oh my god, I'm trying, I'm tripping on my words. So, like, these are for each booster pack that was released in the game. So, like, the first one is Battle for Zendikar. This actually takes place after Nyssa's story. So it'll give you five battles, and then you'll go from there. This one in particular is a ton of fun, because it actually plays with four different colors, which is not what you're recommended to do. Um, but yeah, so Origins is the only one that has, like, 25 total matches. The rest have five. So they explain, you know, this this will show you Gideon, this shows you Jace, this shows you Liliana, this shows you Chandra, and this one shows you Nyssa. And uh, they each use a different color. Each color has its own, like, typical abilities that it'll go with. Uh, white is all about um, creating, at least in the current meta, it's about creating, like, tokens. Uh, they sometimes have creatures with flying. It's about uh, gaining life back. It's about vigilance. Vigilance means that when you attack, your card doesn't tap, meaning that you can attack and then if it, the monster survives, you can also use it to block on your next turn. Because it's usually a big toss up if it's like, ooh, do I attack? Because if I do, then I won't be able to block anything to throw at me, and so on. And then, um, lifelink means every time you attack, uh, if, whether it's blocked or whether you hit them, uh, you gain your the attack of that monster as life. And there's a whole fucking, uh, there's a huge deck that revolves around that in the current, um, Magic duels, so. Uh, and then J Jace uses water. Water is about control. Uh, so it's about sending your car sending your opponent's cards back in their hand. Uh, I know Jace's like story in particular, it's about throwing cards from your from your opponent's deck into the graveyard. Um, it's about um, just basically locking thing that locking things down. Blue is also the most common to have monsters with flying, I feel like. Even more common than white. Uh, and they have a few other abilities, too. I think they typically have more defenders. Um, defenders are monsters that, like it says, can only defend. So they'll, they'll have low costs. Like, I think one's like Wall of Fog, which costs one island. And then it's got like zero four, 4 So it can't do any damage, but it can stop their attacks um, for a good amount. Uh, so then... Liliana is uses black cards. Black cards deal in like zombies and stuff like that, and a lot of like return from the grave, like you saw against when we fought against them. Some like trickling like uh, abilities that do damage directly to you. Um, they also have uh, I'm trying to think of what it's called. There's so they they typically like destroying cards. Like there's a card that you will see constantly called Murder, and it costs two swamps and any and one of any other color. And it just destroys a target monster. It's just simple and clean right there. Um, so that's typically what black cards revolve around. And then there's fire, which is about... Um, or mountains. which So red decks are about burn. So it's about like damage and stuff like that. You'll have a card where it's just like one mountain and do two damage to any creature. And if, if you do damage... So say you do two damage to a creature and it's only got two defense. And it's got like... Say it could have like 20 attack but two defense if you do that even if you're not attacking if you do that damage it's gone it's just immediately destroyed 
So that's what they're all about. They also heavily, heavily use um, haste. Haste means that when you play that card, it can attack immediately. Um, you'll find a lot of that in red decks. You'll see it occasionally pop up in the other ones, but that's where you'll find the most of it. Red decks are all about like getting as many cards out as possible and just like beating the enemy down fast. So a lot of high attack, low defense monsters. And then green uh, is about like big bulky monsters um, and about getting summoning them quickly. So these are the ones where you'll have like seven cost to summon like a big like worm or dinosaur, or, uh, dragon, etc. Just things, maybe not dragons. Dragons typically go with red, but just something's like. This is all about getting as many monsters out as possible and having them beat the shit out of your opponent. Green also has an ability called Trample, which means, like, normally, if you say that you have, you're going against, like, a 7 7 monster and you just block it with, like, a 1 1 monster, that's fine. It'll destroy your monster, but then none of that damage goes back to you. Unless the monster has Trample. Then it basically it's like piercing. So if it's, if it's a 7 7 against a 1 1, it'll do 6 damage to the opponent and so on. Um,. That's, there are a lot of tramp monsters with Trample and Green, and then a few other abilities. And to make this, so that's the very, very basic. I think it's pretty easy to grasp if you follow along that general theme. Once you start getting away from these though, there's also multicolored decks, so you can have white and blue. So it'll combine like the two specialties of these two into one deck. You'll have white and black, white and red, white and green, and then blue and black, blue and red, blue and green, black and red, black and green, green, etc. They all combine. And then right now, there's even a couple like three color decks. They typically don't go beyond that. Like it becomes too hard. You can kind of figure out the problem where it's like if you have uh, a white and a blue deck, and let's say you draw only blue mana, but then you draw all blue, all like white spells, you can't cast them because you don't have the right mana. So it's all about finding balance. Mono decks, so just one color, are the easiest and definitely recommended for people who are just starting out. Um, but if you're feeling a little adventurous, you can go forward with that. Like, I know, um, once you start getting into the story stuff, like, once you get into this first expansion, it starts combining, um, it starts combining a lot of the, like, the Planeswalkers together, like, it just, like, kind of meshes their decks. So there's a lot of multicolored ones in here. Um, but that's the general, like, very, very quick rundown of magic. Um, it is by no means an in-depth explanation. Magic can get as in-depth as you let it. There's a lot of abilities that revolve around different, like, uh, booster packs and stuff like that. Like, this first one, Battle for Zendikar and Oath of the Gatewatch, they're all about support for the Gatewatch, which is those five. And then it's support for, like, neutral cards. Like, actually, if I look at my card collection... Um, I can show it off, which don't require anything. Let's only show owned, please. Okay, and then filter. I believe just that should work. Okay, that sort. No, I think it might be. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, this is pretty much what I wanted to see. So, like for instance, this right here is a neutral card. It doesn't require any particular mana. And neither does this one, and so on. So there's, like, support for that. There's typically trade-offs. <coughs> like, they won't be as strong as, like, a regular mana-colored one because it's easier to cast them and stuff like that. So there's a lot you can do with this game. Uh, I recommend, If you're new to Magic, I highly recommend doing this, going through the story. Like I said, it's honestly just pretty cool to, like, read up on the origins of these, of these guys. Um... Like, you know, go through the story of Gideon, then Jace, and then Leon, and then Net, then Chandra, then Nyssa. That'll give you a pretty basic understanding of, like, the ma the how magic is played. And then Battle for Zendikar expands their story further. So, yeah, like, so for instance, there's, like, five different things. It'll, it'll tell you, like, a little bit about them before. It'll tell you what, you know, shenanigans they're getting up to before the duel, and then you'll win the duel, and it'll give you like a message saying how they won or how the conflict was resolved. And it's a it's only like a paragraph here and there, but it's like I it kept me I wanted to know more. I played through all of the story for this. Um so yeah that's magic duels. Very cool. Once you graduate from that, then we move on to Magic Arena. And Magic Arena is honestly the most fun I've had. Like I so for my background with magic I played it when I was like 12, maybe, I might even been like 11 or 10. 
uh, I went to a YMCA summer camp and like all the kids are playing magic there because <laughs> they're a fucking bunch of dweebs. Um, and so like, I was like, Oh, I went to my parents. I was like, I want to play magic. And they didn't know how expensive it would get for them. But, um, so I played magic and the first deck I had was actually like, a a white and green deck. It was about like phantoms and stuff. I don't even remember how phantoms, phantoms play anymore, but I know I haven't seen them come up again. So, um, but I had a lot of fun with that. And, uh, this magic duels kind of scratch an itch or was to help me like get back, back into magic. And then I kept seeing ads for this game and I downloaded it again. It's for free. And I was like, holy shit, this is exactly what I wanted. So the difference between this one is that magic duels, I recommend only facing, facing the, um, the NPCs with magic arena. You don't, there is no NPCs. Everyone you face is a playable is like against a real player. And I know that can get intimidating at first, but they give you five starter decks right off the bat once you finish the tutorial. So they give you a green, a blue, uh, a white, uh, a black, and a, and a red. And then every day after that, like right now, it's like an hour until I can do it, you'll earn a new deck. And I think there's ten separate decks, one of each two colors. So um, so like I've got red, uh, red and green, uh, white and red, red and black. I think I created this one, red and blue. And then... Uh, green and blue and so on. So like they'll give you cards and they'll come with like a bunch of cards like in them including some rare ones too. So it's not a bad deal and I highly recommend getting into this game. Definitely do some more research though because there's no way I can like cover everything. Uh, it does go through like because I recommend like investing yourself in this one. There's uh, there's a lot more options too. So you can just you can straight up just buy packs which to do so, it's 1,000 gold per pack. So, as you can see, I've got about 1,000. Or you can spend the premium currency, which is gems. Now, I don't think there's a way to get gems other than a few specific ways. So, like, I think this is the most free-to-play one. Uh, actually, no, this one only gives gold. I actually didn't know that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, there's only a few ways to do it. Uh, let's look at the different events, though. So, this is... Uh, Mormir's Madness. I don't know when this ends. I actually have a video out on this, and this is... I think I might release that video first. Um, but yeah, so, like, you can win a couple of random cards, some gold. It's cost 500 to enter, or gems. I would never pay gems when you can pay gold instead. Uh, this is, like, the free-to-play currency. This is, like, the money currency. And I'm not saying you shouldn't spend money on Magic, because I know a lot of people are very free-to-play, anti, like, spending money and stuff. But... This one really, really emulates the the physical card game very well, so I'm saying I'm not saying don't spend money. Like I, I'm not saying go spend money and like break the bank and everything, but they have a pretty cool five dollar like welcome pack, which I think gives you five of the origins pack, and then it's like twenty five hundred gems, which is a very good deal uh, when you see how much gems cost. <laughs> Actually, I think gems are pretty. It's pretty comparable to what it would be like in real life. So 750 gems is 499. It's 600 for a pack. So it's about $4 a pack. And I work at GameStop and that's how much we sell them for. It's $4 a pack. So they cost pretty much the same they do physically. Although obviously there's like you can't just like turn around and sell them if it's something you don't need. So take that into play. But I'd say find a happy middle. Try and earn as much free stuff as you can. If there's a good deal, like a $5 welcome deal, don't be afraid to spend that and like, I, I, I bought that because the game is free to play, so buying a $5 deal, I was like, it's fine. So, um, these are the real events. So this one, only pre pre premium currency. Uh, you receive six 15-card packs, uh, and then you use them plus the regular lands. You don't need to supply those. Make a 40-card deck, and then based on how many wins you get with that deck, you can either you can even earn your entry cost back, um, you earn a little bit less. Obviously, they make it so you have to win at least six wins in a uh not in a row but six wins to get your your money back and only a little bit more but regardless even if even if you lose you'll get 200 gems back which is not much um but you'll get a total of three plus these packs so total of nine packs and that's yours to keep like you like once you make a deck with these you can keep those cards later and make your own decks with them this is some, like, essential magic stuff. They used to do this in, like, physical card stores back when I played, and it was some of the most fun I've ever had. Um, it got a little bit more expensive there. I think it was, like, $25 to do it then, or, like, there was, like, a sizable cost. 
This is a free version of that, which I've already done, which is why I have so few cards. Um, but you can do 5,000 gold, um, and then you can try and earn your way up. I think it's about, I don't know if it's possible to win your money back. No. So this is how you convert your gold to gems, basically, depending on how many wins. I think I only got two wins, which is why I have 2,700. Um, but this is a different one. So it's like it's, it opens three packs, and it's a 14-card draft. Basically, it'll put 14 cards in front of you. You pick one, and then it'll give you 13 cards, then 12, then 11, <laughs> then 10. And it'll kind of rotate between three at a time, I think. And that's a lot of fun, too. It's because it's the same deal, where you, just get, you get random cards from the newest for, um, from like a one set, and you try and build a deck. Um, and again, that stuff is a lot of fun. That's stuff that like Yu-Gi-Oh! sort of had. I think Legacy the Duelist had those two types, but... They weren't done very well, and they don't offer anything. This one, at least as far as I can tell, they do this with every pack. Like, I know there's supposed to be a new pack that releases in, like, six days. I think it's supposed to be on the 17th, and I'm sure they're going to be doing events like that for this. So that's, like, the way you can... Let me try and do this. This is... Let me do all modes. And then there's other ones, too, where if you don't want to spend the upfront cost, or if you want to spend less, you can do this. And there's, like, a different tiered reward system here. Um... Yeah, so you have to win at least 40 to get your money back, and but you get less packs total. Um, oh, no, because this one's rotating. So this is the, the rotating draft versus like just getting all the cards at once. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. I've already done my daily quest for the day, which is why it's showing this. But every week, you can for every like five wins, you get a free booster pack, which is pretty cool. Um, the daily quests aren't terrific. Um, like this one's pretty good and it's gonna reset soon. Usually you'll have like one really good daily quest and it'll be like cast 20 to 30 like uh, of, a sp of two specific card spells. So like it'll be like cast uh, 20 blue and black spells and then you can do or blue or black. So you can either run an all blue deck, all black deck or one with both. And every time you cast one, whether it's a creature, whether it's a regular spell, uh, it'll count towards this. And then once you defeat, once you beat it, depending on how many it wanted you to cast, you'll get like 500 or 750 gold. And then this, it starts off, it's like 250 for your first win, then 100 for your second win, and then another 100. And slowly the money gets lower, because I guess they want you to come back daily. Um, but it's like, it's, it's a good way to earn uh, gold. You can probably earn about, I'd say at least 1,000 a day without really playing too many, maybe playing like five duels winning at you know uh maybe a couple like these ones require you to win these ones just require you to like play and honestly the games go very quickly um like this <laughs> i'm <t> <laughs> i don't know if i want to do this because i'm tempted to play but this is going to go a lot longer if i do this so i might have to edit a little bit how long are we going okay i guess i'll show it off so this one plays a little bit differently i guess if i want to be fully invest in this. I should show how this one plays differently. So I'll give you a match. You, I don't think I've waited longer than like 20 seconds to find a match. Even at like 2 or 3 in the morning. Alright, come on. Don't make me a liar game. I believe the matchmaking works based on either your ranked um, rank or your I think someone told me, or I think I read somewhere it's based on how many rare cards you have in your deck. Okay. So, I've got my deck, it's green here, it's all about getting as many um, monsters out as quickly as possible, getting some big boys out there. So, at this, when you're against a player, you have the option of keeping your hand, um, or mulliganing, and then it'll take, you can only draw, you can put them all back and then draw six cards, and I believe you'll be able to, to scry, which is an ability in the game, and it's something they added to this. Um, which means you can look at one card, and then you can choose to put it at the bottom or your top of your deck, and that's before you even, like, start playing. So they let you do that if you mulligan. But, um, I've got a pretty decent starting hand here, so... I don't have any big hitting monsters, but this can help me a little bit with that. So, we'll see. Just still waiting for my opponent. Sometimes people take forever. I don't know why. Like I said, the games match up very quickly. Um... It kind of seems silly to make me wait this long, especially since there's no timer. All right, I'm going to close Magic Duels. Hopefully that doesn't ruin everything. All right. So they go first. Uh, so the trade-off for going first is, as always... Oh, what's this? 
I've actually never seen this. That doesn't seem fair. So that just seems like a generic mana card. I've never seen this. I don't know what kind of monstrous deck they're going to be playing here, but I'm afraid. So, this is Land of War uh, Elves. It's one of my favorite cards. It's sort of uncommon. Basically, you can treat this as a mana or as a 1-1 creature. So even though it's the first turn, and I've played one card, um, when it dies, put a 1-1 counter on target creature control. Uh-oh. So even though I've played one card, now it basically counts as if I have three mana, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go according to that. I'll cast one that costs three. This one works similarly. It lets me look at the top five cards in my deck. If I have a mana, it lets me immediately play it, and then it puts the rest of the cards at the bottom of my deck. I've never... This is the, honestly the first time I've fought someone who's using a, a mana or a, I think they're called brown decks. Um, this is interesting. So yeah, I just let them attack me. And now they're tapped so they can't attack this turn. Um, so I'm going to use Lanchwood Armor. Which gives you 1-1 one, one for every forest you control. Which is quite a bit for me. And then I'm going to have him explore. Um... Which you search the top card of your deck, you can choose to put it on the top if it's not a if it's a land, put it in your hand. If it's not, you put it on the top of your deck. And then that one lets me play another land too. And yeah, off to a good start. I had a pretty decent opening. I don't know what their deck strategy is, but it scares me. I guess I think these add extra mana, depending on how much of those you have. I don't like this card. So that attacks every turn, and it can't be blocked by walls or, like, defenders and stuff. Um, okay. So, I think I can play both these. So this is another monster. And then this, I can enchant one of my lands, which gives it, like, a special ability. The one for this one uh, makes it count as two mana. And then I can add a plus one, plus, plus one counter. So, I'm just going to attack... They don't have the power to kill me, so they have seven total, I have eight. So, they're going to get rid of this. That's going to put a counter on this, which is going to give it six, four, I believe. And then their equipment card, which they used, go just goes back. Equipment doesn't go to the graveyard when the monster dies. Honestly, I'm going to let them like beef this thing up, because it's forced to attack. So when it attacks, I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to let it hit me, and then I'm going to go straight for them. Ooh, this one can't block either. This one can only block. Yeah. If I had enough power, I might let that go, but I don't yet. Um, do I want to take that hit yet? Yeah, I'll leave that. It's a big hit, but they don't have a lot to defend themselves with. Okay, so that's seven. I'm actually going to leave this, because then I'm going to block that. Um... And this one I should attack with, and I will. Because even if they try to block it, he um, has a special ability too. It's it's honest, also, it's just good just to get a lot of, uh, just meter out that damage. Okay, so they've got, they've got another scrying card. They only have one card left in their hand. I have none. I've played everything I got. I'm on a wing and a prayer here. Okay, so they're trying to do more damage to me this way. I don't know what this is, and it scares me. Okay, so that's equal to the number of different lands you have. They're going to try and attack with that. This is forced to attack. I'm going to kill it this turn. Um, whether they attack it with that or not, I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to let that go right over. And that's super dead now. Another forest. They're going to keep doing damage to me. Um, I could attack with Land of War Elves. Because honestly at this point I have enough. Um, I have enough mana where I don't need to use this ability. But I'd rather have it as a defender. Just to help me get over it. That's going to die. They chose not to block with that. Which was silly. So I have eight. They have seven. That's not good. They're going to get real close to killing me. Four. 
if they want to make that, they can have it fly right over me, but they're not going to, it looks like. So that creates a token which gives them more mana. This is exactly what I needed. <laughs> okay. So I think this gives me game. So this is prodigious growth. They know it's good game. Prodigious growth gives a creature plus seven plus seven and gives it trample. I could have given it to that one too. But I prefer ones. Yeah, so a lot of people do this and I don't like that. I don't like when they concede. Because there's there's so many missions based on like um uh, based on like casting certain spells, I never concede unless they play a really annoying deck. Because um, I just let people cast as many spells as they've got. Because I know they're trying to do their daily missions. So, but yeah, that's magic. Um, it's very very basic overview. And like, I, and so like, just so you know, even like, even if the match ends, whether you lose or win, you can hop right back in there. Um, they're very very good about making this feel very quick. Sort of. Some 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 ma magic matches can go on for a long fucking time, um, but honestly, uh, I'm really really enjoying this. This is exactly what I've wanted. I don't like playing physical anymore because I don't like collecting cards and then trying to find people to play and stuff like that. But this is pretty damn fun. So that's magic. If this gets you interested, cool. If not, I get it. Um, so this is uh, yeah. This has been for me. If you're, again, if you're looking to pick up magic, I would definitely download Magic Duels first. Uh, just play through some some of the story modes. If Honestly, if you want, you can do both. Because uh, this, this has a tutorial. It's kind of throws a lot at you at once. Um, but it's very, very hold your hand. Um, and it forces you to do it before it gives you access to playing the game. So if I, honestly, the way this works, because it gives you like a different deck a day. Um, and it's very much like a daily thing. I'd recommend downloading both of them. So this is Magic the Gathering Arena, which you can download from their website. Um, and then there's Magic Duels, which is right on Steam. I would download them both, go through the tutorial in this game, do your first daily missions, um, try and like get a little bit of a feel for the game, then go into Magic Duels to kill time in between and start like playing through those stories. Or just play this one, because this is the one they're updating. Um, but if you're struggling, Magic Duels is not bad, but I wouldn't invest any money into it, that's all. Um, because they're not updating it, so. But yeah, thank you guys, and uh, if you want more magic videos, let me know. Or if you just like, doesn't seem like for you, that's cool too. Because, honestly, I like recording it, I like playing magic. Uh, it scratches a very slimmer itch to me that Yu-Gi-Oh does, although this one seems like, aimed more at like adults, and all, honestly, the, the art on all of these cards is phenomenal. Um, so thank you guys, and I'll see you later. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, just a quick shout-out to the December 2018 Patreon subs, donators, whatever you want to call it, uh, for tax reasons, subs. Um, thank you to Ertrev and Stuff with Scoutfly for a dollar. Stuff with Scoutfly, brand new this month. My friend Justin from GameStop, you should check out his channel. Uh, Carlos Lopes with the two dollars. Fuck that guy. Uh, Azure with the three. Thank you. Maz, Happy Lamp, Jacker. <laughs> I always forget Happy's full name. Uh, Maz, Happy, and Norm MP or Norm P with the five dollars. Thank you guys. Uh, Sir Eniac and Connor Soverwall with the ten, and the man and John, the man, the myth, the legend, Barnett with the fifteen. You guys rock. Uh, thank you all so much. Literally going straight to my <laughs> straight to my car insurance. So thank you. Um, but yeah, so special announcement this month. Uh, continuing, uh, just for those who don't know, uh, any. If you're a Patreon sub, you get to watch videos early, um, unless I put it straight out. So, uh, right now, I don't really have, I can't have concrete numbers on which what's already out. But, um, there'll probably be a few Let's Go EVs, uh, a few Tag Force parts, uh, a few, um, just miscellaneous videos and stuff like that. So just videos I gotta start going down my list and doing. Uh, but the biggest announcement by far is, starting this month, uh, I'm gonna be doing Let's play Digimon World Redigitized Season 2. Uh, and you're like, oh, Nick, you've already played that. No shit, that's why I said Season 2. Fucking keep up, let's go. Um, so, what it is, is just me let's playing uh, Digimon World Redigitized. It's been a few years since I've played it. Um, and I'm going to release one part every Friday. Um, so the first one is like January 3rd or 4th, whatever the fuck. I didn't check the date, I don't know. It's not the first, I know that much. Um... And then, you know, every Friday. But, if you're a Patreon sub, you can watch all of them immediately. And I know right now, there's at least three or four. 
So you can go into that. And, you're like, and you may be thinking, like, oh, cool, I mean, you're playing Digimon again. What's so special about it? I will tell you what's so special about it. Um, I'm going back to form. The, when I started this channel, when I started doing videos, I would basically play a game in the background, usually Digimon, and I'd just shoot the fucking shit. I wouldn't talk about anything. Like, nothing specific, and um, I kind of strayed away from that for a couple of reasons. My life got real fucking depressing, and I, want, I didn't want to, like, condemn you. I didn't want to, like, bring you guys down. And um, I don't know. It's, it's harder to do that, to be honest. It's harder to just be like, here's some interesting stories. It's easier just to be like, oh, here's this thing that's going on in the game and talking about the game. I'm not saying the other videos are bad, but if you're like, man, I kind of feel like Nick has kind of shifted away a little bit, or, um, you know, I kind of like the old Digimon videos better, this is probably why. Uh, so I'm going to try and do this. I'm going to do this with Digimon redig Redigitized for at least a little bit. I talk about it more in the first video. Um, I'm going to do it for a good amount, and then uh, when Digimon Survive comes out, I'll switch over to that, and then... When that's over, I'll switch back to this. And then after that, maybe I'll play another Digimon game. Maybe I'll play a game like Okami or Paper Mario. Because my favorite games don't get enough love on this channel, which is fucked up. This is my channel. Why the fuck don't you guys like the games I like? Um, so yeah, this Patreon outro is a little bit long. But that's this is also my new way of putting like general announcements. So, come on Patreon sub. Watch that shit early right now. Uh, and if you're like, I don't know, maybe it won't be that good. Watch, uh, watch part one. It comes out early uh, January. And if you're like, Nick, you use this outro for the entire month, so I'm watching this on like January 20th, then great, you've got at least like two or three videos. Fucking watch those, and then you can watch even more, and so on and so forth. Stop bothering me. Also, I got new posters, but that's it. Thank you guys, and uh, I'll see you all soon. Thank you very much again. You guys are amazing.